<laughs> hey everybody, welcome to my Joker m movie review. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit late, as I am on most of mine. Um, this one's not as late as others. I think it's only like a week late, maybe two weeks late. If I had to describe this movie in one word, that word would be masterpiece. There's just no other way around it. This is the best movie I've seen this year. Um, on the Star Shatter scale, I give this movie a 100. And I predict that Todd Phillips will get the nomination for Best Director. And as of this point, I think that I'm rooting for Joaquin Phoenix to get the Academy Award for Best Actor. I tend to gravitate towards movies with protagonists like this. It's why I like movies like There Will Be Blood, uh, No Country for Old Men. Um, this is more in the vein, though, of Taxi Driver which I hadn't seen in a while. I went back and I watched it after this, and, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if a bunch of Martin Scorsese films were getting a lot more hits and downloads recently after this movie came out. I liked this movie so much that I went and saw it three times on opening weekend. Um, I saw it Thursday evening, uh, Friday evening, and Sunday. And I want to go see it yet again. Um, it was very dark, and it was very disturbing. Um... But in a way that isn't like a giant scary monster, in a way that feels all too real. And I think that's why it strikes a vein in some people. And a lot of these wannabe journalists or writers um, you know, are lucky to be born in an era where there's plenty of jobs. And I don't really think the market's very competitive because a lot of these zines... Um, they just hire garbage writers and they do about 30 seconds of research on Google and then they fly with whatever they found. Um, I think they aren't able to articulate really how this movie makes them feel. So they just say all this nonsense about what it's going to do to society. And really, art does not drive society, society drives art. If you don't see that, then I'm sorry. But when you look at all the art of certain eras, right, like in Europe there was a time where everything was very inspired by religion. Uh, and the art shows that. So you know that they were religious. Uh, the culture was a very religious one. A lot of our art is here in America is, is violent. And I think that's more of a reflection of our society. Our society is violent, so our art is violent. To try and say it goes the other way is an absurdity it is it a, is it a, it's a complete absurdity um, our films are that way because we are that way our art is that way because we are that way a movie about a sociopathic clown that really holds up a mirror to our society and says what are we doing we're cutting funding for mental health programs we're ignoring these people and then we want to blame guns or we want to blame this or that um, this me movie holds a mirror up and it's difficult because I think what people have been sort of taught recently, in particular millennials and maybe Generation Z to a point, they've been taught to categorize people and put them in boxes. And people are much more complicated than that. They're trying to place this movie, is it right-wing propaganda, is it left-wing propaganda, is it you know pro-white male, anti-white male, is it pro-capitalism, is it anti-capitalism? And it's none of those things. Because the Joker is none of those things. And that's why I think this movie is great. And that's what they fail to understand. It, the movie can't be fit, can't fit into one of those boxes. And, and for me, I am one of those people who can't fit, doesn't fit in, into your typical box, you know. I come from a particular background. My mom came here legally. I'm a vet. I used to be very much on the left. Then I switched. Um, oh, actually, you know what? I, I don't even think that I really switched too much. Um, I think uh, the, the political spectrum switched. You know, I, I was at one point a, a crazy rocker. Uh, and then I'm not going to go on to what I do for a living, but it's a job that you wouldn't expect me to have. Uh, and these are all things and reasons why I, I, I love this movie. It, it can't be put into a box. Yes, it's about a, uh, a hero or a, a, a comic book character, not necessarily a hero. Um, but it, it's not a comic book film per se if you think there's going to be, 
you know, Batman's going to come in and, and, you know, there's going to be some kind of a fight or some kind of a heist. One of the worst reviews I've seen for this movie is from one of my favorite uh, channels, who's actually the reason I started watching this channel is for video game reviews, and that, that was Angry Joe's review. And a lot of it was what the guy, Alex, was saying about he didn't like it because it, it, him and, and, and the other Joe kept mentioning how, well, how does this fit into the DCU? They need to throw all that into the garbage. Forget about all that and just watch the movie for what it is. Forget that it's even the Joker. Call it something else. Why does... One guy on there was saying that he can not picture this guy fighting a hero. Who said there's any hero? Who said there's Batman in this world? Yeah, there's there's Thomas Wayne, but who says there's Batman? You, I can't stand when people use outside knowledge to try and judge a movie based on, like, all oh, those characters in Infinity War, they're all going to come back. Okay, so you're using your outside knowledge of the studios and how they work. and uh, Don't do that. That, that. That's so... That's so stupid. You can't judge something on its own merits. That that I, I I don't like that. This movie is not about superheroes and capes or capers. This movie is about a guy who's deeply mentally disturbed, and what happens when he can't make a connection with anyone in humanity despite his best efforts and feels abandoned, frustrated. Nobody's listening to him. These are the things that can happen. You can't ignore problems like this. Um, and, and these are all reasons why I absolutely love this movie. I think it's a masterpiece. Um, it really resonated with me. It's my favorite movie of the year so far. More than Avengers Endgame. Which I also gave a 100 to. Um, I'd like to come back and, and do a, a more in-depth analysis of this film. It is a film. It's not a movie. Um... And I actually went back. I hadn't seen King of Comedy. I went back and saw King of Comedy. I bought it on Amazon Prime after this movie because everybody kept bringing it up. And uh, yeah, I, I can see it. It does take inspiration from that. And maybe now Martin Scorsese will think twice about his comments about uh, comic book movies. And I, I know this is a bit of a more long-winded uh, movie review, but I think this one deserves it. Um, I really, really want Joaquin Phoenix to win the Academy Award. I was rooting hard for him when he played Johnny Cash and he, he lost to um, he lost to Philip Seymour Hoffman f for uh, his portrayal of, uh, of Capote. Um, a snooty, uptight, arrogant, sack of trash, New York elitist over Johnny Cash. Come on. Anyway, um, let me know what you guys thought of this movie. And, and you know, I've said on this channel many times, I'm, I'm a Marvel fan. I have not liked most of the DC films. I did like Aquaman, I liked Shazam, and I liked Wonder Woman. So they're, 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 they're crawling back. This is not a DC... I'm, I'm sick and tired of everybody trying to make everything a connected world. Just stop it already. Just watch the movie for what it is. Anyways, um, let me know what you guys thought. Leave your comments below, like and subscribe, and I will see you later. Okay, bye.